Hi guys, John here. This video will show you how I built my Seaside Paradise from start to finish. So, for starters, I want to show you how, uh, a quick tour of what I did. Uh, it's about 10 minutes, and then after that, we will get into it. So, at the bottom here, we have some display areas and some chill areas. Again, I'll explain how to get all the patio equipment and all the new items for your town or settlement. It was very difficult to build on a raised platform. I know so much more now, and there are some things that you just really need to know <laughs> about building on raised platforms. Anyway, we have some magazines and pool cues which like to fall through the floor to the ground all the time. So I put those magazines on right at the end. I'll probably take them off again, but you can't really lose them. You can't lose the stat at least. Uh, another ch outside chill area with some bars. I really wish they update the game somehow where they can you can allow people to come into your settlement, not necessarily other settlers or your settlers, just random people just to use your facilities and to populate it more. Anyways, some more shops and again we'll go into the shops in great detail. Which ones to build, which ones not to build, as in which ones bring happiness, which ones don't. Some more outside sections, some missing, damn it, magazines. The bell, if you ring that bell, it's in your menu, all the settlers will come towards it, so you can sort them out. Some more display display places, and power armor little shop there, and an actual workshop. I actually want to add more to this, but I want to see if I remove my water purification business from this island, if I can build more, I probably will be able to, but it's a bit of a mission, so I thought I would do this first. Now we head up to first mezzanine, private chill out area, private bar. I didn't really focus on the housing on the inside. I just wanted to focus on the outside. Moving across to another socializing area with uh, some more chairs, different chairs. It's all about the lighting, really. If you, if you place the lighting well, you can make the place look absolutely amazing. Come rain or shine. So, some more shops. Again, we'll get into that statue, which uses way too much copper than I'd like to admit. Then, I think we head on up to the next level. Eventually, yes we do. Another social area, some bars, a couple pool tables, some barbecues or brais as we call them in South Africa. And I'll, I'll get into detail on how to place those items. It can be a massive bitch trying to get those things to stay on there, but some of the items work with the build menu and some don't. We'll get into that. Here we have the throne rooms, open plan, obviously, nothing to hide. The understructure was very difficult as well with the lighting and the wiring, but we'll get into that. From this section, we head on across to my favorite section. One of my favorites. It's very difficult to have a favorite because you just you come up with ideas and you just build and you build on that, and it's just it's so you can be so creative. Here we have some private viewing areas, some mini TVs, Nuka Colas, and here we have the outdoor cinema showing probably Ted. There's a Mr. Handy model in the center of those two TVs. I didn't get close enough to see it, or did I? No. Some more tables, blast radius games. There's nuclear material in those, actually. Office area. And a statue again, which is way too much copper. Okay, moving on up, I think. I think we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, top section we have display cases for all the big ass weapons and some of the smaller ones. This was a bitch to build. Could be because like I said earlier, some items can be used with the build menu, others just cannot. And there are steps you need to take. And there are just some things you really need to know. You could save yourself so much time if you know 
how to operate with those. But again, 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 we'll get into that later. Just some more weapons on display. I'm not sure about the power consumption of this because mine's been in the red from the beginning and all the lights work. So I don't quite know how much I need or how much I'm actually using. In the corner, now the private area, nothing naughty going on there, just some nuka colors and medics. Dog meat not there as usual. What is that? That is uh, enraging shish kebab. There should be a Mr. Handy model there as well, but nope, he's probably 50 feet below me on the ground. Some more display cases, alien blaster. The snipers like to stand up. Curie, the cute Curie, she's awesome by the way. She's my favorite companion. More weapons, well, same weapons. And then the last area, which is the cigar bar. Complete with, well, cigars and Nuka Colas and comfy chairs. I want to add more to this, but the build is at max, so until I try and take away my purification business, I won't be able to. But that is it for the tour. Now, in the next couple of videos, I will show you from start to finish what I did, how I did it, and pretty much everything I went through to get to this stage. Okay, so to unlock the island, head to the dead center, you'll find your workshop. From there, follow the cables, head south, directly south, to find a shipwreck or boat wreck, and head on inside that. Flip the switch, be ready for your ambush. Once she is dispatched, head back over to your workshop and flip the switch first, then your island will be active. There will be another ambush here, so watch out for that. Once they've been dispatched, you can actually start building. Now, into build mode and have a look around. Just have a look at how vast this area is you can build. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you can build the whole thing, it just means you have more choices of locations to build. There will always be a build cap, unfortunately. But use this time to explore, just explore very, very carefully where you think you would want to build and uh, scrap, scrap as well at this time. Uh, obviously leave some trees or whatever, but uh, use this time to scrap as well. Explore the entire island, decide where you would like to build, or start to build your settlement. And your first, your first location might not be your final, but we'll get into that. So once you're up, you set up your radio beacon and you're getting some settlers in, build some beds and houses. Nothing too big. You don't want to spend resources on this right now, but uh, build a fruit, the mud fruit plant. That counts for one food, whereas the other ones count for half. I built 18 of those and assigned three settlers who collect six food each. So to assign the settler, enter your your build menu, enter your build menu. Thank you. She, you can see she's already been assigned to those mud fruit plants, but just for the video, you see it says command down there, now it says go. Now you can select either food, guard towers, or shops to assign that settler to that. And it'll actually say resource has been signed in the top left corner. Sometimes the delay is 10, 15 seconds. Anyway, so you can assign set to all these shops. From there, I would suggest pouring all your resources into the water purification, which I built on Castle Island, or the castle, because it's surrounded by water and 
I don't want to build it at my proper settlement because it uses up the build, build amount. So I built 20 purifiers with 10 generators, produces about 580 purified water, which uh, times by 11 caps in the end is a fair amount. Good couple, six, seven grand. And you will be visiting this place and collecting this all the time. Once you've got your, got your stuff set up, head over to your workbench and locate your purified water within. Sell that at any shops you desire. The perks you'll need uh, obviously, local leader allows you to build shops. The cap collector will come a bit later, maybe, where you can invest in your shops. I uh, strongly recommend this. It adds about eight, eight, 800 caps to their total amount, which helps tremendously. And the local leader as well to, uh, to build those shops. And some other ones, scrapping maybe, and just, just, just perks that will give you more, more resources. Now, the resource I ran out of the most was dependent on what I was doing. So if I was doing weapon crafting, adhesive, definitely. But when it came to base building, copper for the lighting was the big troublemaker. Now, you can craft adhesive at the cooking station by combining a couple of plants and purified water, I think it is. And you will get five adhesive per craft for that. And the ingredients required for that are very common. Now, with the cutting fluid, the ingredients are a little bit more scarce, so only use it if you have to, but you can craft oil under the chemistry station, under utility, cutting fluid. This will give you three oil and one steel per craft. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a run through of shipment locations where you can bulk buy resources, very useful and pretty much eliminates the scrapping need. So for starters, I head over to Diamond City, I think. Got too much dirt in that hair? Get it so there are four vendors here that will bulk, bulk sell you resources. So the first one over here is Mo. It will give you wooden cork. Not too scarce at all. Arturo here will give you aluminum, copper, gears and screws. Obviously very valuable. And Myrna, whatever her name is, will give you ceramic, fertilizer, plastic, springs and steel. Now staying in Diamond City, head over to the side and you will find a Dr. Sun who will sell you antiseptic, glass and rubber. Rubber is very important for building generators and I didn't know about this guy until fairly recently. I wish I had known about him sooner. But after that, let's head over to the next area. Up next we have Vault 81. Now this is a good area, hopefully you're still friends with them, to get to several good resources. So at the start to my left, sometimes there'll be a trader called Cricket. I think I'll show it. Yeah. And she will sell gears, lead, silver, and springs. Silver, obviously, very useful. Lead as well. Once you're inside, head down the elevator. Don't try anything. Once you emerge, head over to a shop where someone called Alexi will be chilling. So, she will have sometimes, and I emphasize sometimes, nuclear material, but she'll always have ballistic fiber. But when she does have the nuclear material, obviously, buy it all. Up next, we're going to head over to Good Neighbor, Sweet boy, brother. You hold on. where Cleo over here will sell you ballistic fiber, copper, lead, Don't and worry. oil. Copper, very I useful again, obviously. And uh, Daisy over here will sell circuitry, crystal, and silver, and adhesive. You're looking for. After that, we're going to head over to Finch Farm. Go oh, check out. Once you're here, search for a guy named, what is his name? His name is Corn. <laughs> no, his name is Daniel Finch, I think. Yes, and he will sell you cloth, concrete, fertilizer, and leather. Next up, I'm going to quickly show you where to get the Picket Fences magazines. I don't have the exact location within the area, but I'll show you the location. So the first one is Sorgus Ironworks. There you will find a magazine that unlocks new statues, which is the Copper Eater. Next is the Combat Zone, where you'll unlock potted plants. After that, you'll have a Beantown Brewery. This will unlock high-tech lights.
Then just next to that, patio furniture. Picket fences issue five. Then lastly, hardware town, where you'll unlock more high-tech lights. Okay, so now we're going to go through some general tips on uh, the build menu and placing items. So the build menu should only ever be used, controlled at least, by the D-pad. Don't use circle to try and cancel your options because that can get you in a heap of trouble. And uh, all you have to do is push down to deselect something like that bed there, push down and it's gone. Now a lot of the time I would press circle which might take away the floor or instantly scrap something and it got me in a heap of trouble. So keep that in mind when uh, doing the build, using the build menu. There are two ways you can use to place items. You can do it manually or use the, uh, the build menu. To do it manually, walk over the object and hold down X. If it doesn't pick up, step back, release X, then go back to it, otherwise you'll just pick it up. So hold down X. Now keep in mind, this way you can knock things over. You can knock, you can move things, so if you're spinning around or something, just keep that in mind. Also notice how the Q never changes its direction. So I can stand this side, move around, and the Q will stay at the same place. And I won't. So that can make it a bit difficult when trying to place items. You have to manipulate it within the game. So here, easy enough, just use the side of the pull table, make it straight, and place it. But with this one, you could probably use the build menu anyway. I'm just showing um, what happens when using it manually. When using the build menu, be sure not to accidentally select the floor because that will be catastrophic for those plants and the magazines on the left. But when using the build menu, you can spin the object around and it won't knock over anything in the environment. So it's pretty much a free roam for that. Now this will be good for using items that are meant to be in certain areas, like this pull queue is meant to be on the table, so it allows you, but it won't allow me to drop it there. This is the same with um, wine bottles and booze on top of bars and stuff like that. When placing items that need to be upright, go straight to the build menu, select it, and it'll automatically go upright. And easy enough, you can place it. Again, sometimes you won't be able to play th place this, like... I won't be able to put this on top of the bar counter in the background. I'd have to do that one manually. But for these items on tables, it's very easy, very quick. Again, be careful if you have a deck. Be careful not to select the floorboard underneath because everything will go crashing down and that sucks. So use this method when placing items like this. Okay, some general happiness tips. When building shops, keep in mind that the armor shop, general store, the bar, and the clinic will all increase your happiness, whereas the armor shop and the guns will not. It's purely decorative or more so to get yourself some more caps to sell your water. Now, when it comes to happiness, as you can see, it's 97, and the food is just over the amount I need, and the water doesn't really matter. Defense, that needs to be as high as possible all the time to increase your happiness as well. What you will also need is to increase your charisma. So the happiness is totaled by the number 10 and the amount of your charisma. So I've got 16, 16 people. It does fluctuate 17, 15, but in general, that's the, the rule of thumb. If you have the undying need to place guns, let's just run through this quickly. So from your inventory, drop it. It has to be dropped, it kind of resets it. Go into the build menu pick it up if she doesn't kick it away now you can turn it and manipulate it how you want then walk up to a surface it can be put down on and hit X now it's not like this for all weapons as you're about to see the final judgment um, it just won't work and it's not only because it's between two bar counters there but it happens with other weapons so Again, dropping it, getting it to the build menu. So now the same as the other gun, but it just doesn't happen.
Then back to the gorse. It does. Right, some power talk. Now, this was a bit tricky for me because I had a whot of lights set up and Jenny's to power those lights. And at one stage, some lights on the pier down there turned off like a whole end section. And I built and built and built generators and couldn't get my power out of the red. Eventually, I went, walked up to one, uh, picked it up, put it in my storage box, put it back down and the damn thing lit. So I did that with all of them and they all turned back on. So I have no idea how many more generators I have that I need at all but the power still says it's in the red it's not a problem I'm going to sort out right now but let's carry on so the wiring all comes down through one power source and then uh, splits left and right ah, see this is all the crap that falls through the floor all the time so anyway you can do all your cabling which is going to cost you copper and each time you put one of these uh, light switches down with well, actual connectors it powers that area I don't even think it needs to be connected by wire, but I probably have a bit more than I need, but I don't like the when the wires droop too much. And it goes all the way to the back. One last thing before I go. If you want to take some cool pictures of your settlement, I suggest building uh, these photograph towers. Now it's just a series of stairs, staircases, going up to get some cool angles on your settlement for pictures. I had some in the distance, but I had to take them down. And on that note, I'd like to say welcome to my new subscribers. And if you found this video informative at all, please leave a comment. I'll always reply. And that's me. See you later.